Imagine a bird so massive, it could rival the size of a small dinosaur. A bird so large and intimidating, it earned the nickname Demon Duck of Doom. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into one of the most fascinating colossal creatures from Australia's ancient past, Dromornis. These giant birds lived millions of years ago during the Oligocene to Pliocene epochs, and they weren't just big, they were enormous. Some species grew over 10 feet tall and weighed over 500 kilograms. Yes, you heard that right, a bird bigger than most humans. So, let's take a closer look at the world of Dromornis and explore why this prehistoric bird is often called the Demon Duck of Doom. First off, let's talk about the taxonomic journey of Dromornis. This genus, a member of the family Dromornithidae, was discovered in Australia and consists of several species of giant, flightless birds. They belong to a group known as Mihirungs, which is an aboriginal word meaning giant bird. Some of these birds are considered to be some of the largest birds ever to have lived on Earth. Now, Dromornis was first described back in the 1800s by Sir Richard Owen, a famous British paleontologist. The discovery was made when a fossil femur found deep in a well in Queensland was sent to him for identification. Owen originally thought it might be related to Dinornis, the giant moa from New Zealand, but he soon realized that this was a completely different bird, one unlike any other he had encountered. That's when Owen named this new genus Dromornis, which comes from the Greek words dromos, meaning running, and ornithos, meaning bird, in reference to its large legs and running capabilities. Over time, more fossils were found, leading to the identification of four species under the Dromornis genus. So, why is Dromornis called the Demon Duck of Doom? Well, let's talk about its size and anatomy. The species Dromornis stertoni in particular is believed to have been the largest of them all, standing over three meters tall, making it one of the largest birds ever to roam the earth. That's taller than your average giraffe. And as if that wasn't intimidating enough, Dromornis stertoni weighed over 500 kilograms, possibly up to 650 kilograms, depending on the individual. This bird wasn't just huge in size, it was a beast of power. Despite being flightless, much like an emu or ostrich, Dromornis stertoni had muscular legs built for running, and those powerful hoop-like toes were likely used to push off the ground at high speeds. Its beak was also adapted for cutting vegetation, further supporting the theory that it was a herbivore, though some researchers argue that it may have occasionally scavenged smaller animals. Now, let's break down the species a bit more. Dromornis stertoni might be the most famous, but let's look at the other species too. Dromornis australis, the smallest of the Dromornis group, standing at around two meters tall and likely a bit more slender than its counterparts, but still a formidable bird in its own right. Dromornis murray. The earliest species in the genus, known from the Oligocene to Miocene period, was smaller at around 1.5 meters in height. This species had a small brain compared to its size, much like a giant chicken. Dromornis planae. Formerly classified as Bullicornis planae, this species stood at around 2.5 meters tall. It's believed to have had a large, curved beak, and while it might have looked like it could be carnivorous, most experts agree it was herbivorous. Now let's talk about what made these birds so fascinating, their behavior. Dromornis species were not just big, they were probably quite territorial as well. Imagine a male Dromornis stertoni aggressively defending its territory like a modern-day emu or ostrich, which are known for their fierce behavior during mating season. It's possible that these birds exhibited aggressive territorial behavior, especially when it came to mating and protecting their young. The nickname Thunderbird comes from the idea that these massive birds might have been intimidating enough to be perceived as thunderous giants of their time. Some paleontologists even speculate that males might have been more muscular and robust, with females being slightly smaller. This sexual dimorphism is seen in the modern emu, so it's very likely it was the same for the Dromornis species. As for where these giant birds lived, we know that Dromornis roamed the fossil-rich plains of Australia. 
fossil deposits from the Alcuta fossil beds in central Australia, which are famous for preserving vertebrate fossils, are the only confirmed site where Dromornis, Stertoni, has been found. This region was home to a wide variety of prehistoric creatures, including giant marsupials, crocodiles, and other large birds like the Ilbendornis. But unfortunately, as is the case with many large species, Dromornis went extinct. Some theories suggest that the climate change and competition with other herbivores led to the eventual decline of these massive birds, the lack of diversity in their food sources, paired with a slow, reproductive rate, made them vulnerable. As the climate changed and habitat shrank, the Dromornis birds couldn't survive. To wrap things up, Dromornis, the demon duck of doom, was one of the most extraordinary birds to ever walk the earth. Whether you see them as fierce, thunderous giants or gentle giants of the herbivorous variety, one thing's for sure. They were unlike anything we've ever seen before. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the prehistoric world of the Dromornis, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a comment below on what you'd like to learn about next. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.